Hi guys, hello and welcome back to yourstory.com. Uh, in search of an interesting story, we have come across EasyTap and today we are joined with Mr. Vyas Nambian. He's the CEO of EasyTap and as interesting as his story is, I have just come to realize that he has an interesting name going on in the company. He's the Vyas man turned boss man of the company. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome Vyas. Tell us about the story. How did this uh, name come about? Well, thanks Adishna. I, I suspect uh, it's my marketing team uh, <laughs> who may have had that right. uh, influence. Right. You know, we were doing uh, an event in, within uh, EasyTab where we were giving our, each of our projects you right. know, creative, fun names, right. and a little story behind each of them. Right. We actually chose more movies, etc. Right. And these guys were thinking about something about me. Mm -hmm. He said, "Oh, look, <laughs> Bias has become the boss. So right. you know, Bias man has turned boss man. Right. And you know, got posted on, uh, I guess, on LinkedIn or Twitter. Right. And so that's sort of right. The, so the CEO, you have to do take up some additional responsibility and newer challenges. Tell us about it. What happened? What was the aftermath like? You know, it, the, part of the transition was simple. Right. Because, you know, I, this is a team I was with for four and a half years. Hmm. Everyone knew me. I did a lot of the stuff right. already. Right. Uh, the biggest part of the change was, you know, in my previous role, Bobby and I operated. He was the captain and I was the co-pilot. Right. 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 And Bobby is the, just in is, case our viewers are. Yeah, there. Bobby is Abhijit. Right. Abhijit, uh, right. Bobby's, you know, who is CEO and okay. co-founder, right. friend. And, you know, the nice thing about a, being in the co-pilot role is, right. you know, sometimes in, you can say, you know what, Bobby, the ship's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn off. Right. right. And you're always prepared for emergencies. You're like, always <laughs> pre prepared for emergencies. Yeah. But I always knew that, hey, look, I can I could take a mental day off, right. you know, and go home and not worry about the problem. Yeah. I could just say, look, it's Bobby's problems, yeah. you know, today. Yeah. Um, now that I'm in the captain's chair, <laughs> It's I, always it's your always, problem. It's always my problem, right? right? So right. there is no. So that was the biggest difference, honestly. Right. Right? right? Is that it was? It was. I had. I'm constantly on, hmm. and uh, that was a change. But has not having the founder changed anything otherwise in the Easy Tab? Not really, right. because the founders are still engaged. Bobby's on our board. Right. You know, we're neighbors. Right. You know. So we're still engaged. It's a process. And it's a process, yeah. right? And it's an evolution. And look, every company goes through change. People come in, right. people go. I think the thing that he would be proud of and I'm proud of, we're mm -hmm. creating something that's bigger than us. Right. That it should be able to go on without us, right? right? right. And uh, so and I think that's happening. Right. So let's talk about EasyTap. Uh, it has been, what, like eight years mm -hmm. for you guys? Yeah. What has changed over the years? What are your offerings and what have you added to it over the years? I think, you know, it's every year is different. Every month is different. Right. You know, we're constantly growing. It's an exciting space where things are always changing. Right. If you're not innovating mm -hmm. in India, even the government is innovating. Exactly. Right? So we got to be out yeah. thinking the government in some yeah. space, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think for us, what's happening is, you know, our full product story. Mm -hmm. We've always been a very tech and solution-centric story, Correct. right? With deep integration into our clients, which, you know, they love our ability to easily create a mm. custom solution for them that wraps around the way they work right. versus them having to adapt to how payments, mm -hmm. you know, work. Mm -hmm. And so we do uh, custom integrations for our client. Right. And I think over what's changed over time is we've become, our, our product stack has become much more complete, mm -hmm. much more polished. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've constantly grown and we've now expanded internationally right. and expanding, you know, in, largely in government space. Right. Um, as well as now getting into the modern retail space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our bread and butter, we started with e-commerce, right. the mobile delivery. Mm -hmm. We've gone much beyond that now. Right. So what are the recent launches, if you can... So, you know, recently we've, you know, launched uh, EMI products. We've launched right. UPI. Mm -hmm. We've launched Multibank. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've launched a whole range of devices. So one right. of the things that's different about us mm -hmm. is that we're device agnostic mm -hmm. and 
the way we're architected allow us allows us to plug and play different solutions. Right. So you could have a you know Verifon terminal on the counter, a Pax device for queue busting, a mm -hmm. kiosk solution by a third player. Right. We can mix and match all of those things. So we mm -hmm. brought a lot of devices. I mean, we we lead an Android um, integrated Android. Mm -hmm. smart passes mm -hmm. in India in the sense that we brought them into the country. We were the first major players to deploy those. Mm -hmm. We offer about four or five Android solutions today, right? right more than anyone else. Right. And um, I think those are the things we've brought into the market mm -hmm. and now we're seeing, you know, great adoption. Tell us about the government to consumer space a bit. What's happening there? What's the scope like right now? Look, I think I honestly don't know the, I, I know it's big, mm -hmm. I can't put a number on right. it, but I just see the the growth happening from state to state. Right, absolutely. Everyone's going and we're seeing just incredible. And government, we think of, when you say government, you think of it as one sector, but it really it's isn't. Not. It's not. Yeah. There's so many yeah. things, right? Exactly. There's public distribution, benefits, uh, utilities, transportation, mm -hmm. police taxation, all of those are different players, different sectors. Right. Uh, but I think in the end, it's about creating that digital infrastructure and permeating that throughout the fabric of India, right? right. And that's exciting, right. you know, for me, because again, you know, I'm, I, I want to see that development yeah. happen. Yeah. And, you know, we're seeing the, these deployments, our Android devices being deployed mm -hmm. in Tumkur, in, you know, right. greater, Ch you know, Chennai Corporation right. um, with so IOC. Now smaller cities and smaller, smaller cities ex expand tier two, tier, tier three, three threes, right? Yeah. IOCL with our LPG distribution is across the country. Correct. You know, it's right. across the country, small place. Everybody uses mm. LPG. Mm. Uh, Rajasthan has gone. Rajcomp is across the entire state. It's a huge exactly. program. Goes you know covers every district in Taluka. Mm -hmm. You know in that state. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing more and more of that mm -hmm. and we're excited to participate in that and you right. know, spread that. You know, we're not thinking um, just tier one, tier two, but this right. is really deployment across the length and breadth of India. Right. right. And since you are working with so many state and government agencies, I think you're the best person to answer this. There are, it comes with a set of its own challenges, yeah. correct? <laughs> what are those and how do you go about tackling them? I think Working with the government is a skill set that not everybody has. Right. <laughs> right, and something that Easy Tap has mastered. So well, right? we've mastered by not doing it directly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. right? right, we've partnered with people who know. Right, and in look, it's it's the reality. Mm -hmm. Government requires somebody to provide a full turnkey solution. Correct. Right. They're not integrators. They don't. They're not going to get payments from one. Mm -hmm. You know, hardware from another, software from another, right. and do that integration. Right. They're looking for somebody to come in and provide the whole solution. Exactly. And there's a great ecosystem of system integrators in mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. and we work with all of them mm -hmm. and we work with them, show them the value of our payment platform. Mm -hmm. So when they build a solution, the payment engine inside is easy to have. Right. And that also has the benefit that when we work with government, we're mm -hmm. very often working with a, uh, with, a, with a system integrator or a party that knows right. how to deal with the government is well connected and knows how to deal with the the nuances and the intricacies of the government. Right. And we are just dealing with another corporate entity. Right. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that is a benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, or we work with our bank partners also, you know, who also know how to deal with the government mm -hmm. and, you know, we'll work with them. Right. right. So. And we all know how the past five years have been sort of integral in pushing towards the digitization aspect. Yeah. So you have to constantly innovate Absolutely. to stay at par with with the government, with, the government, with other yeah. players in the market. Right. So what is happening, technologically speaking, at the technological front? How are, are you coming up with? So, you know, we're taking some of the digital assets and mm -hmm. expanding it and playing it in areas where we, you know, haven't pushed the frontier, f right. you know, far enough. Right. And again, for I think... For example, if... So, for example, you know, where can we use UPI? Okay. Right. Today, most of the deployment of UPI is in India. Right. 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 And we want to think about how do we deploy UPI outside of India. Yeah. You know, take yeah. an Indian payment instrument and go international with it. Right. 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 That would be fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of and the things. And is the market we'll outside warming up to the? To, well, think about how many Indians are there abroad. Right. So imagine you are as, as a tourist. Yeah. If you could be in, you know, Prague and be able to pay with uh, you know QR code right. that's displayed there and you pay with your right. you know HDFC bank app 
Correct. Well, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Be, right? It can happen. I think yeah. the infrastructure is there. Mm -hmm. I think we just got to think big it's and figure to, out how do we right. enable that. Right. And so I think those are exciting things that, uh, you know, problems we're trying to crack. So what kind of growth are you looking at in that case? So, you know, we're looking, there's some of these things will take time to ramp up, mm -hmm. but over the year, I think we're very excited. I think, you know, um, I'd be um, looking at a growth of anywhere from 70 to 100 percent right. over the course of the year. Right. And, um, and both, you know, business in India mm -hmm. as well as international. Right, right. And you have some high profile investors on board. Uh, how are you planning to use this? resource at your end yeah look we have a great set of investors yeah. we have a great yeah. board right. very supportive of us right. they are excited by the story mm -hmm. they're also very patient mm -hmm. you know there's there's stuff that can happen that's hype mm -hmm. right? right and you know as Jamat said sometimes it takes it's much harder to build a business brick by brick exactly yeah um, and uh, so you know they have the right you know expectation or you know i think we're very aligned mm -hmm. um and they're you know, so I think with and we've never had a challenge raising funds, well mm. connected, we've right. been able to get so that piece, you know, largely for me is like I don't worry about it. Right. Right. For me it's just go focus on creating the business, creating Absolutely. value. Um, you know, I don't want to have to spend my time thinking about how do I manage the board. Right. That just takes away from how do you run the company. Absolutely. Right? So I think and that's one of the things we were blessed with. And since you had to step up from one role to another, it sort of comes as a boon, I believe. Yeah, it having is. Yes. It, you know, having that, uh, you know, and, you know, I was lucky in that when I came in too, I had a good relationship with the board. Right. So it was a very smooth transition for me. Right. They were internally very supportive. Right. And uh, they continued to be. Right. So. so I'm aware you just, uh, before we started, you did tell me that we, you're not looking at a funding in the near future, but maybe sometime later, you know, what, I would. what, what well, are the expectations look, then? You know, honestly, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't view funding necessarily as a, you know, huge, that, that's not a goal. Right. 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 It's a means to an end if you're not achieving that means in some other means. Right. 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 So for me, it's okay. Uh, we have the cash, mm -hmm. we're well positioned, let's just mm -hmm. grow. Mm -hmm. We'll only use, go raise additional money if we, you know, think it'll accelerate even right. more. Right? Right. So, you, you know, you won't hear me come out and say, oh, wow, I, you know, I raised this much, mm. etc. To me, that's not right. a, in, in some ways, I was telling somebody, it's like, yeah. it, you're taking money from someone. It's yeah. a sort of a little bit of, a, you know, you got to be cognizant that you're, that means you didn't generate enough money yourself. Right. right. And even as a CEO, you have a very different approach to the business, right? I, I, yeah. how, I remember how I was telling you, like, yeah. uh, CEO is somewhere, someone told me it's, he's the chief energy officer, but, right. but you have a different way of going I, about I, it. Uh, yes. I actually suppose, you know, yeah, I, you know, I struggle with, right. uh, I'm an introvert sort of masquerading <laughs> as an extrovert. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. So, then. Uh, but, you know, my focus has been more on execution. Correct. You know, really getting good at, you know, like when companies go through stages, you know, the scaling from zero to one, mm -hmm. one to 10, 10 to 100, mm -hmm. what's needed is very, is different. Right. Right. And I think the skill sets vary. Mm -hmm. And as you want to scale up, you have to get good at execution. Right. You cannot, you, you, there's lots of different complex moving parts that need to be synchronized mm -hmm. together. True. And if you don't plan and execute well, right. you're, going to, you're going to suffer. Right. So the, one of the things I'm driving through the company is mm -hmm. you know, much more focus on execution, on execution, making and meeting commitments. You make right. commitments, you got to meet them. Right. You know, and to do that, you know, you've got to be very disciplined about right. it. Right, so. right. All right. That was a lovely chat. Thank you so much, Vyas. Thank, Thank you for you, joining Sintoshina. us. Absolutely. Yeah.